Hello and welcome and in today's video I'm going to share with you the top 10 most difficult arc teams. So let's get into it. In at number 10 we have the Desmodus and this is just one of those creatures which albeit isn't going to be the most difficult team out there getting those blood bags for that first Desmodus is definitely going to be a challenge and also just surviving the whole thing and getting to the area where they spawn is quite a challenge as well especially when there's so many of them all in one place and you just want to tame one of them and you don't want loads and loads of these things after you and obviously the getting of the blood bags will be a pain as it will take ages to extract a blood bag like every five seconds from your body but it's definitely well worth the tame the desmodus is one of the most useful tames out there especially for its sanguine elixir as it is an absolute taming cheat next up we have the bloodstalker and this has the exact same taming method as the desmodus but why is it more difficult well blood bags are not easy to get on gen 1 in any circumstance at all as yes once you tamed your first desmodus you have yourself a blood bag farm whereas that simply isn't possible on gen 1 and you just have to keep doing that same method and getting hundreds and hundreds of blood bags to actually get yourself a really high level blood stalker and these are definitely essential on the gen 1 map as they are pretty much the only creature which you can use to get around as flyers are banned on that map. And they're a pretty good shout on Arboration 2 as flyers also aren't allowed on that map. Although you do have creatures like the Rock Drake. Whereas on Gen 1, this is your only real creature which you can use to travel around at great speed. Like the Rock Drake on Arboration. Now next up we have the Giga. And I was going to put the Carcodontosaurus in this spot. But I decided to just discount it on the list as actually that tame isn't too bad and it can be somewhat friendly compared to the Giga tame. Especially considering how little resource you need for that tame and albeit sometimes it can be buggy. I would say the Giga tame is still just a little bit harder because of the amount of resource you need for this thing. And yes you can trap this thing pretty easily and then you just have to stand there. And shoot it and it's not going to be the hardest time in the world but obviously it is still going to be a very difficult one and considering its size and absolute mass as a creature you kind of expect that but hundreds and hundreds of trank darts does definitely take a while to get and it is pretty difficult to get as crafting all of those narcotics and then all of those arrows is just gonna take a lot of time and if you're breeding this creature on official then have fun with raising a creature like this for two whole weeks. This is why I am never an ARC official player. Now, next up, we have the Golem. And this creature is essentially tamed by shooting cannons into this thing's face. Or you can use rocket launchers, but it is a lot harder to do it with that method. Albeit cannons' mobilities are absolutely terrible, whereas the rocket launcher you can aim pretty easily. It's just more difficult to actually get it to work with the rocket launcher for it to deal enough torpor before the creature actually dies. As the rocket launcher is more of an attacking weapon where no one, absolutely no one is going to use the cannon to raid a base in a PvP scenario or anything like that. Rocket launchers with homing missiles will probably be used at some point and they definitely are used to destroy metal bases. But not cannons, that is kind of more of a taming weapon which can be used to tame things like the golem and also creatures like the astrocetus as well. And it definitely does make the tame very difficult as the cannons are hard to aim and very very expensive but it is well worth it as these creatures are absolute beasts of scorched earth and they can tear through any creature that spawns on that map now we have the basilisk and this is the first arboration creature on the list and actually the next two creatures after this are arboration creatures again arboration creatures are actually significantly harder to tame than one may think and in terms of the basilisk taming method it seems very simple on paper just get some rock drake eggs that's your only real option on operation but you can use wyvern eggs 
and you can use magma saw eggs if you want and then drop them in front of it without aggroing it and then it will eat them and then you have yourself a tamed basilisk but aggroing it is very easy and obtaining those eggs especially rock drake eggs on arboration is very very difficult if you don't have a rock drake already and even if you do have a rock drake it still is a challenge to go all the way down into the red zone and get those eggs and bring them back up the basilisk is definitely a hard tame but a very fun one which you should do at some point as long as it doesn't bug out but you know it's arc now we have the rock drake and you may be telling yourself well isn't the basilisk a harder tame as you have to get the eggs and also not de aggro it well this kind of becomes a more expensive tame basically just requiring air conditioners to raise it once stolen but obtaining that egg and also getting it out without a rock drake is very difficult and you can tame the basilisk if you already have a rock drake and it will make that tame much easier but if you don't then the basilisk tame may be considered a little bit harder as there are some extra steps but you do have to raise this creature as well on top of hatching it so it is a very very timely process which I'm, is why i'm putting it higher on this list than the basilisk but once tamed this is a creature which is essential on arboration and if you are playing arboration then you definitely want to tame these things as this is pretty much your only real way of traveling around the map like you would with a flyer and it is a such great achievement once you obtain one of these things and it is so so worth getting one of these things and you definitely definitely really should try and get yourself a rock drake as soon as you can albeit they are very difficult tames it is definitely attainable to an arc player with any moderate level of experience and the reaper had to be on this list this creature is one of those tames with an immense amount of steps again somewhat seeming simple on paper requiring you to get this thing down below a thousand health get impregnated by it and then just raise the reaper baby but there are so so many little things which you'll need to do in between that firstly finding a reaper then building a trap to actually damage down that reaper then going up to it and getting impregnated by it which can lead to you dying if for some reason it doesn't want to do the impregnation thing you can tell its health is low enough when it has a red glow then after that you need to get loads and loads of xp to get this reaper to be as strong as possible then after it's raised it's going to kill you so so many times and reaper pheromone glands are going to be used to kind of put yourself in the position that the reaper mother would be in but once tamed it is well well worth it as these are the beasts of arboration they deal so much damage and no creature can really stand against the reaper they're even stronger than the giga really in my opinion in terms of force and they're a lot smaller in terms of their size as well and they have a hell of a lot more mobility over something like the giga in at number three is the rhino gnatha and these creatures are very very irritating and difficult to tame as their tame method just has a wealth of steps and on asc at the moment and just into the future on asc you will just have a hard time finding these things on the island or lost island in any swamp biome as they are incredibly rare whereas on asa the spawns are somewhat fixed and they're really not difficult to find at all so it's significantly harder on the older version of arc due to their spawns but you can always just raise your dino account do the dino wipe command or anything that helps the spawning of dinos as long as you're on single players the dino wipes the command if you wanted to know is destroy wild dinos if you didn't know that already don't just put destroy all dinos i can't remember what it is this a command like destroy dinos that will destroy your tamed dinos too and you don't you don't want to do that at all so destroy wild dinos and that is going to dino wipe all of the wild creatures on the map and in terms of this thing's taming method you'll want to kill a male rhino ganatha to get its pheromone which is a challenge in itself because they have a lot of health and they pack a punch in terms of damage then get a bronto and all of those items which are on screen if you want 100 percent effectiveness the bronto isn't strictly necessary just use any kind of large creature but the bronto is definitely the advised then really you want a net gun for this so net gun it and then after that you're going to want to damage this thing 
down to a really, really low amount of health, as low as you possibly can. You may need to hit it a couple of extra times. I'm using Awesome Spyglass mod here, but that isn't on ASA at the moment, and so isn't the net gun, so you'll need to trap it in that case. And you can always use the magnifying glass if you don't have any kind of mods. To see this thing's health, the Torpor isn't really necessary. Then you're going to want to feed that pheromone into your Bronto, or whatever creature you're using in this case. I'm not sure what creatures can be used, the Bronto is definitely advised. Then, afterwards, it will come out of its kind of net trap, and then it will impregnate a dino, which is where you want to feed it all of those resources. Then it will collapse over, and your Rhino Ganatha baby will be born. <laughs> In at number two is the Shadow Mane, and this creature really seems like a very, very simple tame on paper, but in fact, it isn't at all. This creature just has a wealth of things which can go wrong with it, namely that this creature will just like to aggro onto everything, and you're going to need things like Gilly and probably a trap as well to do this fully successfully or at least with the most amount of ease and then getting the fish at the right size as well can just be a challenge in itself because you know arc is arc but before we get into number one i just want to list a couple of quick honorable mentions which didn't make it onto the list the trudon has to be mentioned on this list so does the carcodontosaurus the noglin the astrocetus the astrodelphus the titanosaur all of the titans which you'll find on Extinction, the Managama and the Hesperonis, all having their own varying difficulties in taming methods. So let's get in to that number one spot. And in at number one is the Amargosaurus. And this creature is by far the bane of so many people's lives, requiring Raj Clark 24 hours to actually tame this thing, which is insane for a creature which like is unprecedented for every other arc tame no creature has a taming method like this one and if you do this this taming method in fact you will probably not be sane by the end of it allowing it to run around and fight with you until it is tamed this is the absolute bane of any arc player's existence but we can't forget the Fenrir too this thing is just, just, it's just too difficult. But anyway, that was the end of today's video. And I really hope that you enjoyed this one. And comment down below, what is the most difficult Arc Tame in your opinion? And I will see you all later.